when it comes to quality content creation, I think about three values uh, that really guide me. And I invite you to consider these as well as your kind of North Star guiding, uh, guiding light for your content creation efforts. I call it the ARC of content creation, A-R-C, because I love acronyms too much. And this one makes up an acronym as well. So A stands for authentic, of course, obviously. R stands for relevant. And C stands for consistent. All right, let me talk through each of these. A, authentic. Well, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that's something I prize highly and encourage you to do. But essentially, I'll say this. Authentic content is not content that tries to sell your service, your product, your program, your retreat, your webinar, your book. Not trying to sell, not trying to get the audience to pay money for something. That's not authentic content. Now, that could be sales content. Sales content obviously is also on the spectrum. You know, selling content could be on this, you know, sales pages, sales copy, marketing copy can be on the spectrum of authentic to manipulative and whatever. But here I'm talking about your free content, your free content that's, you know, your video, YouTube videos, your Facebook posts, your Instagram carousel posts, your LinkedIn writings or whatever it is, your blog posts, your podcast, all the free content you put out there. The less you're trying to sell something in that piece of content and the more you're trying to exp genuinely explore what you really believe, what you really prize and value, the more authentic it is. And secondarily, the more you genuinely are trying to serve humanity without expectation of return, the more authentic your content is. Ironically, the more authentic your content, the more sales you'll get. But don't tell anybody I said that. That's not the purpose because that's the trick. That that's, This is the mental trick. The trick is if you go, ooh, if I'm authentic, I'll make more sales. You're instantly inauthentic. You're instantly inauthentic. You instantly are hooked into the attachment towards results. The more you're unattached from results and say, I create this as an act of genuine self-exploration and as an act of genuine service to humanity, no strings attached. I don't care if I get a single like. I don't care if, I, if this thing gets viewed once, if this thing gets read once. The more you can unattach, the more authentic your content is. And this is something that all of us, myself included, are trying to do. It's not something we can, I don't know if I'm ever, ever, have ever been perfect on that. And I don't know if I'll ever be perfect, but I try. And what I'm trying to is always detach, detach, detach from the results. Like I said, though, the more authentic, the more ARC you do, authentic, relevant, consistent, the, the better the results you get, including sales. But don't tell yourself that. The minute you tell yourself that, you've already gone out of the gone out of the truth. See how tricky this is? It's kind of like <clears throat> it's kind of like trying to fall asleep or trying to relax deeply. The moment you get, oh, I gotta relax, you've you come out of relaxation. Same idea. The moment you say, Oh, I, I gotta create flow, you, you're out of flow. And this is this is the message of Taoism, right? But it's not just Taoism, it's the message of spiritual growth, right? The moment you say, oh, God is here to do this for me, you're out of relationship with God, in my opinion. Sorry, those of you who are theologists may, may, may disagree, but whatever. Let's move on to R, okay? So authentic is one. R is relevant, okay? So relevance is essentially an act of compassion, whereas authenticity is essentially an act of passion, like you're doing it from a childlike passion to childlike passion to curiosity for experience, as well as a childlike passion to connect in, in joy and in, in the, from the heart with the audience with no strings attached, right? That's authentic. Relevant becomes an act of compassion, 
Okay, you got, you got passion and you got compassion. Compassion means I, I so want to meet my audience where they're at so that I can play with them. I can explore with them. I can serve them. And so relevance means you create a bunch of content and then you look back and go, out of all of my passionate rants <laughs> and my, doesn't have to be rants, but it, my passionate content, my authentic content, out of all of that, which of the last 10 pieces, which of the last five pieces, which of the last 100 pieces of content met the audience most where they're at? Because much of my passionate ideas are not, you know, kind of like Buckminster Fuller, a be, you know, before his time. You know, a lot of your passion ideas are before your time. You're, you know, and, and talk about it for 10 years and it will be your time. Just like with me for joyful productivity. It took me 10 years of passionately talking about it before I could, before people would be, or were willing to hire me for joyful productivity. 10 years. All right, do you have that patience? I don't know. So I, I, I didn't have the patience. I just couldn't help it. It was just my passion. I had to keep doing it. No matter if anyone paid me a dime, I had to keep doing it. Now, of course, I still have my day job of talking about authentic marketing. People paid me for that. People wouldn't pay me for joyful productivity for 10 years. But that was 25, 20% 20 of my time. It's like 20%, 20% time, talk about the passion, 80% time, you still got to make a living. So you got to be as relevant as possible. So relevance is... Anyway, I talk about all the stuff in the Authentic Content Flow course in terms of tracking your content so you can be more relevant and all that stuff. But I just want to give you the big overview here. Relevance is compassion leaning in to, ah, oh, this is, I notice this is when I, these are the times I meet my audience where they're at because they're obviously engaging and they're really excited or they're really thankful or they're really in agreement with me or they're really inspired or they're really, they find that funny or they find that interesting. They find that meaningful. Ah, oh, I notice those things. And when I notice those things, it naturally makes me want to lean in there more because just like you, I, I too am a people pleaser, <laughs> you know, just like you, right? All of us are people pleasers. We, we evolved as human beings to be tribal creatures. That's what I mean by that. Uh, I don't mean, you know, to be over people pleasing, but I mean, in your content, relevance is about people pleasing, not in the bad sense, but in this com compassionate sense of if I'm talking a totally different language, I'm like, you have no idea what I'm saying. I'm not speaking your language, but now I'm speaking your language. Those of you who speak English. Right? So, oops, sorry about that, that background noise. Um, okay, so the last one is C, which is consistency. Consistency. And this is where I know a lot of you struggle. I struggled with this too, because I'm a human being. <laughs> and I'm a human being with a monkey mind, just like you have as well. The monkey mind says, oh, that's interesting. Oh, let me do that today. Oh, notification on my phone. Oh, oh, someone wants my help. Oh, I'm not feeling so good today. You shouldn't create content. You're not feeling inspired today. No. I just recently went through a, a bout of, of you know, being bedridden because I've, I got a bug bite <laughs> a major, you know, down here in Mexico. Uh, the bugs are meaner and uh, I got a bug bite. I was like, wow, I never got an affected foot from a bug bite before, but I did. So I was bedridden and I still created content. I don't give any excuses. When I had COVID, I created content. When I was bedridden with my bug bite, I created content. When I was bedridden with a stomach bug, which again, something in Mexico here, I have to get used to the bugs, but I got deeply sick for a week after eating something or I don't know how I got deeply stomach sick for a week. I still created content. No excuses. It's that kind of no excuse attitude that's going to get you consistent. Oh, this thing is taking so long. You know, my content workflow is so, so difficult. No excuses. Simplify. No excuses. Something's going out today. Is it midnight yet? Not midnight yet. I can make a one minute video. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you have to make content every day, but once a week to me is a bare minimum once a week. Once a week, not once a month, no, once a week, except for once a week, once a month, I allow you one week off. I take one week off every month myself. So three out of four weeks a month, bare minimum, bare minimum. 
if, when you're first starting to get into the rhythm and start exploring yourself and you don't know what's relevant yet, you don't know, you don't have an audience yet, you need to do three times a week. It's no question. I did five times a week when I did have, when I had no audience for, for half a year, I did five times a week. And then for the second whole year, I did three times a week. And for the third whole year, I did, I think three times a week as well. And for the fourth whole year, I did twice a week. And now I do one time a week, but I have a big audience, not big. I don't, I don't want to have a small audience, but bigger than most people watching this uh, enough to have a wonderful full-time business where if I want to sell something, I just whisper and enough people buy it's that easy for me now. So I do one time a week content, plus my one week a month off. Now, all those numbers I just said are, are suggestions. They're not requirements. I'm not going to, I, I make it sound like a requirement, but I always say, and this is where I'll end the video, you are your own creator. I believe in your sovereignty, not believe. I mean, I don't have to believe. You are a sovereign person and you need to act in your own free will. So whatever that means for you, whatever consistent means for you, you need to create that rhythm for yourself. You can break the rules. You can break my rules. My rules are my rules. My rules are for me. I make it sound like they're rules for you, but they're not. I, I always want to remind you, they're never rules for you. They're rules for me. So you are your own creator. And you essentially, maybe C, the ARC in ARC of content, C can stand for creator. You are your own creator. You get to decide what your own consistent rhythm is. I hope this is helpful. And may you go and uh, thrive and really enjoy and really find value in your content creation journey.